Hi, my name is Tara Jensen. I'm going to give an overview of MET Plus, which is a verification and diagnostic framework developed at the DTC. I'd also like to recognize uh, Key Seawright, the GSL node coordinator, and the 20 plus members of the MET Plus team that have made this possible. So why MET Plus? Over a decade ago, the partners of DTC recognized that a comprehensive and unified verification tool would make uh, research operations transitions more efficient and provide a consistent set of metrics, and thus entered MET, the model evaluation tools, and now that has been extended to MET+. Plus. It allows researchers and operational scientists to speak a common verification language. It also provides a greater opportunity to train all on verification best practices. And um, most importantly, it provides an opportunity to, to have reproducible verification results. So what is MET+? Plus? Well, MET+, Plus is a framework. You can kind of see a picture of that over on the right-hand side. Um, it's a set of Python wrappers around the core MET statistics tool, as well as the database and display systems that provide the analysis capability. We've recently added a fair amount of plotting um, and then also communication between MET and Python algorithms to make things more extensible um, and more flexible for people to add in, um, you know, maybe more diagnostics or some pre-processing that's needed before the um, data are passed to the, the statistical tools. We have over 100 traditional uh, statistics and diagnostic methods for both point and gridded data sets, lots of different interpolation methods, and this has been applied to many spatial and temporal scales ranging from 5 to 10 to 15 minute um, you know, high resolution modeling to multi-decadal uh, climate simulations. Um, the configuration files are what makes um, it possible to have reproducible results. Um, MILPLUS also has advanced diagnostic capabilities such as object-based methods, um, scorecarding, uh, performance diagrams, and the ability to look at um, you know, the statistics uh, at, on a spatial map. There are a lot of um, use cases in development. Um, over on the left-hand side, there's a word map that gives you kind of a sense of uh, the number of use cases uh, that we currently have in our repository. The biggest um, ones are medium range weather, short range weather, precip. Um, we have a fair amount of focus on tropical cyclones as well as extratropical cyclones. We've develop, been developing more S2S capability, a little bit of climate, a little bit of space weather, a little bit of air quality and, and data assimilation, um, marine and cryosphere, as well as ensembles. Here is a schematic of the architecture for um, MET Plus in the unified forecast system, um, system architecture format. Uh, you can see that across the top, um, we have specifications for the type of data that are being passed in, whether it's gridded or point observations, um, gridded or point forecasts. Um, depending on how you map, match those up, you'll either be able to use grid to grid tools in MET, um, grid to point tools, or point to point tools. And then after that, the output coming out of MET for the most part is, is um, consistent, especially statistics. And those um, are then loaded into uh, a database for use with either MET Viewer or MET Express, the two user interfaces. Here is the data flow um, if you're going to be using MET Viewer for your analysis. After running the MET tools, the data are loaded into MET Data DB, which is a database that um, is used both by MET Viewer and MET Express. Um, and then the the components MetCalcPy and MetPlotPy are called via MetViewer in order to make the statistical plots. So the data flow for MetExpress is similar to MetViewer. Um, you know, after running the, the tools, you load the data into MetDataDB. For right now, the statistics are being computed um, separately from um, the, the core MetPlus um, analysis suite. However, that's going to transition over to using MetCalcPy over the course of the next year, and then um, uh, MetExpress has its own plotting capability to make those interactive plots. And finally, um, if you are um, computing some of the S2S diagnostics, uh, as well as um, just needing to, to uh, use command line rather than using a database, um, then uh, the path is actually does not include um, MetDataDB. Instead, MetCalcPy will call MetDB load in order to read in the data It'll um, perform the computation and then pass it over to MetPlotPy for the, um, the plotting. So here's an analogy for MetPlus, just in case um, the previous descriptions um, haven't really helped you understand uh, MetPlus. So Met 
is a statistical engine. It does all the work. It can't go anywhere, however, unless it has something else to, to move it. So MEP Plus um, is basically the workflow. It drives the processes and keeps everything together. It's kind of like the chassis, the wheels, the steering wheel, and so forth. And then the MEP Plus analysis suite um, all right, you know, is comprised of the user interfaces as well as um, the calculation and, and plotting um, capability. And those are basically the accessories that make the process better. So here's the details around MET, um, the statistical engine. Uh, you'll notice uh, quite a few bubbles. Those all represent individual tools that have a, a limited scope, each one of them. Um, MET was designed to be um, just like any other suite of Linux um, tools where you use scripting to, to tie the tools together in order to perform a particular activity, in this case, verification and diagnostics. So in the green bubbles, you can see those are reformatting tools. Um, we have in the light green bubbles, a, a couple of very um, quick look plotting tools, basically just to inspect the data and make sure that what you're passing in makes sense. Um, in the middle, you can see the, the blue bubbles, which are our statistics tools. Um, and those are focused on tropical cyclone as well as then um, starting kind of in the middle at the bottom, um, just the, the more traditional statistics and then moving into more of the um, advanced statistics. Uh, and then um, in ye yellow are our analysis tools that can be run on the command line separate from MetViewer and, and MetExpress. Um, the two most heavily used ones are stat analysis, which does a lot of the aggregation of the traditional statistics. Um, and then TC stat, which um, you know computes statistics um, based on filtering and aggregation for the tropical cyclone um, evaluation capability. Met Viewer was uh, developed shortly after the um, first couple of releases of Met. It was designed to replicate capability at NOAA EMC um, to have a fairly um, flexible user interface for deep analysis, um, but also having an automated batch engine for generating plots systematically. Um, there's a lot of different plot templates available, everything from series analysis to box and bar, um, probabilistic uh, plots like rock and reliability, ensemble spread skill for ensemble um, forecasts, uh, synthesis diagrams like performance and Taylor diagrams, once again for ensemble, um, uh, the rank histogram, as well as a couple other um, types. Uh, if you're um, interested in, in thinking about economic value or the cost loss ratio, um, we have that as well as contour plots and um, then scorecards um, via the batch engine, which is used fairly heavily um, at EMC. In contrast, MedExpress was developed a couple of years ago in response to uh, the growing need to have a um, more constrained way to look at some of the analysis. Um, so MedExpress has basically quick look interactive plots with predefined um, queries and predefined plots. Um, you, you have a limited number of selections um, and those are pre-populated and then you can um, you know, make the plot and then be able to, to zoom in and look at the data. This is a different way of looking, uh, thinking about the MetPlus tools. Um, we not only have traditional um, statistics, uh, both uh, continuous and categorical and probabilistic um, computation as well as confidence intervals. We also have several spatial methods, um, including object-based diagnostic evaluation, um, both just looking at a single point in time or looking over the time um, dimension. <clears throat> also, uh, spatial decomposition of um, error fields, and then um, looking in neighborhoods. So here's an example in the upper right-hand corner of neighborhood methods, and, and um, basically it's what it does is it's allowing for displacement error um, and still being able to, to compare um, forecasts um, on several different, uh, basically, um, neighborhood sizes. We have a lot of masking capabilities. Um, we have day-night mask. You can see here um, a storm following masking capability as well as, um, you know, latitude bands or longitude bands. Um, uh, at the bottom, we have automated regridding on the fly in the tools. Um, you can either go to the forecast grid, the um, the observed grid or, um, you know, a, a, a separate defined grid. Um, over on the right-hand side, we have Python embedding. I already kind of discussed that. Basically, um, all of our tools can call Python scripts in order to allow for um, reading in different data sets that are not currently supported by MET or um, reading in different, uh, developing, um, you know, different diagnostic fields and, and so forth. 
Um, recently, we added in the ability to compute multivariate PDFs um, in order to be able to look at the relationship between two variables, as well as to develop things like climatologies and look at percentiles um, for percentile thresholding. And then we have a, a um, recently also added a point to grid interpolation capability that is good not only for sparse data sets like local storm reports and trying to make a gridded analysis out of that, like the pra practically perfect prog um, developed in NSSL, um, but also very dense data sets being able to subset, um, say like satellite observations and so forth. Here's a look at some of the diagnostics that are in MEPLUS, including um, you know, uh, multivariate distributions uh, that were developed from the joint PDFs that I talked about in the last slide. Um, we also have a couple different views of TC Genesis, both um, uh, computing categorical statistics as well as looking at density functions. Um, in the upper right hand or in the upper center, we have uh, an example of using multiple fields to identify objects that are a little bit more complex. In this case, it's uh, a dry line. Um, and then those objects are, are then treated like mode objects. Um, in the middle here, we have S2S diagnostics. Uh, this example is a Hoffmuller diagram, and then the space-time coherence spectra is looking at all the, um, the tropical waves um, that are emanating. Um, uh, also, we have the ability to look at spatial distributions of errors, both for point and gridded data, and then several other spatial methods, including distance maps and um, you know mode, in this case applied to, to sea ice. Um, and then for tropical cyclones, um, not only new um, projections such as looking at things from the perspective of radius and maximum wind, but also looking at um, uh, tailborne Doppler radar and drop sons as verification um, sources. And then finally, um, in the middle center, uh, we do have uh, quite a few examples of how you can use uh, MetPlus in order to um, compute systematic errors. So with all that capability, um, clearly there's a need for a fair amount of help. So we have very extensive user guides, not only for MetPlus, but each one of the components. Um, and then we also have developer, developer guides as well. Um, within the, the MetPlus user's guide, all of the different use cases or examples um, are uh, stratified by several different searching methods, um, either by whether they are based on a particular tool or stratified by application. But we also have these quick search um, capabilities to be able to, to go in and, and look for keywords that would help you um, to find a particular use case. And then um, we also recently transitioned our help desk over to discussion. So that's in GitHub. Um, you go to the MetPlus um, repository and then go into discussions. And um, we have 10 different labels um, in order to help people be able to find um, the discussions that they're most interested in. Um, Right now, the uh, the if people are uncertain which label to apply, they just um, put it into incoming. Um, our help desk um, staff has now transitioned over to answering questions in discussions, but they have a, a 24 hour delay or at least a, a one day delay, hoping that um, the community will jump in and, and help with that. We've seen a couple of examples of community helping with discussions, but not enough. We also have a, um, a page that is dedicated to training videos. We're developing our library of training videos. Most of them right now are um, focused on installation and setup, and we're working on um, developing the online um, tutorial um, uh, topics as well as some advanced training capability. Basically, they, they are, have videos as well as scripting um, so that people can be um, watching the video as well as reading along. And if, the, if they're demonstrating something, they can cut and paste um, copy and paste the, um, the command into their own window and practice. So besides the, um, you know, the user's guides and, and the information that we have up on GitHub through discussions, um, we also support um, Docker images of um, the components and, and, um, and then have examples of being able to pull the components together using the plus as well as um, support on Amazon Web Service. In fact, we're working on um, getting a AWS machine image up onto um, AWS uh, in the next week or so. Additionally, we do use continuous in integration. In fact, we use Docker and then GitHub Actions for um, that testing. Um, we also provide SonarCube cybersecurity testing. And then finally, for um, user testing, we provide multiple beta releases throughout the development cycle to make sure that the, the code is hardened before we have the coordinated release. 
And then um, for this year, uh, through the R2O, um, the UFS R2O project, um, we have support for a MET Plus users workshop and tutorial. Um, we're actually looking at taking advantage of um, the virtual world um, for the tutorial, um, probably having a, having 45 minute to one hour sessions, either weekly or bi-weekly between October and May, um, supporting cloud um, instance, the AMI on, um, on AWS, as well as NOAA HPC environment, um, primarily HERA, um, but possibly also WCOS. Um, we'll be providing those that are working in the cloud um, with uh, credentials so that they can, um, you know, kind of work in our area during the, the training sessions. Um, we'll initially be going through the online tutorial and then adding in um, advanced topics after we get through the, the initial setup. Um, and we're recording each session so if someone misses something, they can go and view it um, in the, the break between the, the training sessions and, and um, try and stay caught up. Then also the workshop. Um, we're hoping that it will be in person and in Boulder in June of 2022, but uh, don't really have a lot of information um, right now because we're still kind of waiting to see what happens with the pandemic and travel and, and so forth. Finally, here's a laundry list of planned developments over the next one to three years. Most of it is focused on things like uh, for S2S and then for coupled model evaluation. Um, but, you know, clearly we'll be um, act adding in some additional um, capability as needed for, um, you know, uh, short range weather, medium range weather applications as well, as well as space weather and so forth. And that uh, concludes my overview. Uh, sorry, there's a lot of information in there. Um, feel free to either contact myself or Keith. Um, check out our forums if you need help. And uh, the users and developer guides um, can be found on the MetPlus um, website. Thanks.